Hello and welcome to another Python tutorial. Um, today I just wanted to cover the basics of web scraping. And web scraping is basically just when you visit a web page and try and get information, um, basically things like text or links or images off that web page using a program rather than having to do it manually yourself. Um, so in order to do this web scraping, we're going to need two libraries in this case here. And uh, I'm going to be using Python 3, so I'm just going to cover what we need for Python 3. If you're using Python 2, it's not too different, but there are some subtle syntax differences and uh, a different library that you have to use here. Um, but for Python 3, you just use url lib.request, and that's included in Python 3, so you don't need to download it. And the second library we're going to need for the actual scraping itself, like to actually parse the web page and get the information we want, is beautiful soup. And beautiful soup is not included, so you have to download that. And if you have Python 3.4 or higher, pip uh, is already installed or it came with Python when you downloaded it. So you can just go to command prompt or uh, terminal depending on your OS. And you can just type in pip, sorry, pip3 if you're using Python 3, pip3 install and bs4. And I already have uh, it installed, so it'll say requirement already satisfied. But for you, it shouldn't take more than 20 or 30 seconds to download and install. Um, so the web page we're actually going to be scraping today is just going to be this uh, Facebook stock page here on Yahoo Finance. And this is the URL for it here. And I've just copied that over uh, here and saved it in this variable. And um, so, yeah, I've just specified which page we want to scrape by saving that in this URL variable here. The next thing we have to do in order to scrape this page is add a header because um, a, lot of web, uh, a lot of websites actually block you off if you're using Python or a program to access the web page simply because um, they don't want you know random programs taking up um, space on their server or broadband or whatever. Um, so adding this header makes it seem that you're like a genuine user um, trying to access the web page so they won't block you off uh, because you're using Python. It's just a good practice to add this really anytime you're web scraping or anytime you're using uh, URL lib. The next thing we have to do is we actually have to make the request that we want to send to the uh, to the website. And to do that, you just do urllib.request.capitalrrequest. We pass in the URL that we want to visit, and then we also pass in the header that we made in this step here into this uh, headers argument. Uh, next, we're actually going to send that request. And to do that, we just do urllib.request.url open, and we pass in that request that we made in the previous step. Uh, finally, uh, once we send this uh, request, we get a response back from the website or the web server. And that just gives us the HTML uh, for this web page here. And we're going to store that by doing resp.read. And we're going to store that in this HTML variable. Now we actually get to using beautiful soup. Um, it's just a convention to call a beautiful soup object soup when you're making it. You can call it anything, but this is just the kind of industry norm. That's what people call it usually when they're making um, web scraping projects. Um, and to do this, you just do beautiful soup and then you pass in the HTML or the source code that you got from this um, process here. And then you pass in the parser that you want to use. So here I'm just using HTML.parser and that's normally what I use and I've never had any problems with it. So you guys should be good to use that if you want. Um, now comes the hard part in most uh, web scraping projects and that's actually figuring, figuring out how you want to access the information on the web page. Um, now for here, we want to get all of these values here. So we want to get these eight values as well as these eight values. And to do that, we can just inspect this first one to see what it looks like in the HTML. So when we inspect this, we see that the value right here is actually in between a set of TD tags and it has this class here. So let's check the next one to see if it looks similar. And we see that the next one is also encapsulated in this set of TD tags. And it looks like it has the same class as the uh, one above it. So now just to make sure that all 16 of these have the same class, we can take this class value and we can do control F and enter that. And we see that we get 16 matches. There's 16 values and we get 16 matches. So at this point, it's pretty safe to assume that all of these values are encapsulated in TD tags and they all have this exact same class. Now to actually get all of those, we can do tagged values. And what I mean by tagged values is just that the numbers themselves are still in the TD tags. Like we're not just getting the pure numbers that we're getting the entire uh, kind of TD tag that has the value in it. So we do tag values equals soup dot find all, and we're going to find all of the TD tags that have this class here. So the class should be equal to TA and FWB. And this is the syntax to do that. Um, so here I'm just going to print 
the uh, tagged values just so you can see what that looks like and here I'll comment this out so we don't get a bunch of um, a bunch of other stuff for save and run and that didn't work but whatever um, so the tagged values is just this first um, line here and it's basically just an array and each of the elements in that array are just these TD tags that have this uh, value in between them so now in order to actually get the I'm not sure what actually happened here there we go dang PyCharm I'm still getting used to PyCharm so <laughs> I apologize if there's any uh, kind of shortcomings um, but anyway the next thing we have to do is we actually want to get the values themselves so we don't want the entire TD tag we want just the specific values as you can see here like this we want just the number not the entire line and to do that I've used list comprehension but uh, if you're not used to list comprehension, I'll just write it out as you would if you weren't using list comprehension, just so you can see what that looks like. So without list comprehension, we just make an empty array, and we can call that values. And this will store the actual numbers themselves. And then we can say for TV, so tagged value, in tagged values, oops, in tagged values, we're going to do tv.getText. And that's just the beautiful soup way of getting the text in between these tags for each of the elements in this array. So we're saying for each element in tagged values, we're going to get the text in between the tags. And then we're just going to append this to values. So we do values dot append and put that entire thing in the append. So now we've uh, basically done what we did in three lines here. And we've done that in one line here. And the reason I've used uh, list comprehension is just because it's a little bit faster and a little bit cleaner when you're writing it out. Um, so now that you know what that looks like in a normal for loop, we can just go back to the list comprehension. And this is the same thing except for TV. I just used X um, just because it was shorter. But uh, at this point, we're basically done. All we have to do is say for value in values, and we're just going to print each one. So if we run this, we see that we get... Uh, 120, 120.57, 120.9, 119.84 4 times 200. And if we go back here, um, we get 120.57, 120.9. And this is actually, that was the, this is the most recent version. And this web page right now is a little bit old. So if we refresh this, we should get uh, times 200. So 119.4 times 0.84 times 200. And we have that here. So these values are all the exact same as these values. And um, that's basically how you do it for one stock. Now, let's say, for example, that you wanted to do this for Facebook, Google, and Apple. Um, and I'll show you how to do that really quickly here. So um, we just have to get the symbols for each of those, and we can make a new array called symbols. And we'll set this equal to, it, this is just going to be an array with the symbols for each of those stocks. So for Facebook, the symbol is FB. For Google, the symbol is Goog. And for Apple, the symbol is AAPL. And... Uh, now, how do we go about getting all the information for these three? Well, if we go back here, we see that the URL, it, all of the URLs start off with finance.yahoo.com slash quote. And then it looks like here we have the symbol and then a question mark, P equals, and then the symbol again. So maybe if we just manipulate this URL each time, we can go to the different pages for all of these stocks and get all of the information that we want. So we can do this by going down here and saying for symbol and symbols. And then we're just going to indent all of this, all of this, and we're just going to indent, the, indent that. And then uh, now we're just going to manipulate the URL so that every time it runs through this, we're going to a different page. So we say, uh, here we do that. That's the first part of the URL. That's the same for every single page. And then we do plus symbol. And then plus, uh, let's just go back here. After the symbol, we have question mark P equals. So question mark P equals, and then the symbol one more time. So after the question mark P equals, we have the symbol one more time. And we're gonna add that in here. Now, if we run through this, we should get uh, 48 values because 16 times three, so three different pages and 16 values for each page. And let's just see if this works. So we're gonna run that. And there's the first set, the second set, and the third set. So as you can see here, we have 16 values three times. And we've also printed the tagged values, but if we take that out, um, it'll stop printing this first one. So I can just run that one more time just so you can see. The first set, second set, and the third set. There it is. Um, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to leave a comment. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. 
And uh, if you want to see more Python tutorials, subscribe because um, I will probably be putting out a few more in the coming days. Thanks for watching.